What is going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Haley. If you guys are new and if you are a returning subscriber, I'm so glad you guys are back for another video. Today we're going to be talking about making your house feel super cozy for fall and winter. I have 10 tips for you that are easy, budget friendly, anybody can do this and it just really elevates your space, makes it cozy and festive without spending a fortune or changing too much. But before we get started, I'd love to say thank you to Skillshare for partnering with me on this video. You guys know I'm a huge fan of Skillshare. I've used them for years from everything from learning how to do better social media posts to drawing on an iPad to now even home decor. They have like literally a class for everything you could want. Business, photography, entrepreneurship, marketing, planners, I mean, thousands of classes. And I love these interior design courses that they have now. They even have things on DIY furniture. If you've never used Skillshare before, seriously, it is the best thing ever. It's one of my favorite things to do, especially when Kyle works late shift and I just am tired of watching Netflix. I like to do a class. They have things, I mean, sky's the limit on what you could learn. Everything from business, marketing, photography, design, drawing, painting, everything you want is on there and it's all led by professionals in the industry there's lots of famous people who have classes as well like for interior design emily henderson's one of my favorites over on instagram and she has her own course the first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of skillshare premium membership definitely check it out the first thousand people who uh, sign up with the link down below will get a whole month of premium skillshare for free so you can try out all different kinds of classes and sign up for your membership now let's get into these tips so if you guys have seen some of my other decor videos you know i keep things pretty neutral but there is a limit i just posted a haul with some fall stuff for you guys where i kind of talk about how i incorporate color and texture and different tones for the season so definitely check that out for some inspiration check your local home goods stores see if they have some of these pieces or things that are similar if you like them but the first thing that is super easy and inexpensive to change or to enhance is your lighting lighting is key lighting is key in photography for ambiance and your home it's so important so what you want to do is keep things under 3000 kelvin lighting has a spectrum so the higher the number the more like white or blue it's going to be i don't recommend going past 4000 or you're going to get that kind of more corporate lighting hospital lighting creepy spooky lab lighting we don't want that those bright white lights are great for studios and things like that but you know when you want something to feel warm inviting cozy you want to keep it a little on the warm side now you can change your recess lighting which can get expensive depending on the types of bulbs that you have but i also recommend avoiding as much recess light as possible hey boys no 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 you like mom up here our neighbors out walking hello hi stop stop okay bye now our recess lighting in our house is on the warmer side which does look really nice and actually uh the top like beam here has really nice lighting and then we have a little um what is it called it's like one of those angled lights uh that goes onto our fireplace and it actually does make it look super cozy so that's kind of like the exception if you have like track lighting and things like that it can make it look really nice and cozy uh however clusters of warm lights whether you use candles battery operated candles i don't know if you can see that you can get packs of these on amazon i think we got 12 for like 20 bucks they look really legit they're even they have like the melting wax on them and cluster them in little areas around your house turn the recess lights off you will love it make it warm in here if you do have recess lighting as your main source and you want to use dimmers that's another great way to just change the mood whether you're having company over for cocktails or dinner or you want to set the mood with your loved one you know dimmers are a great way to do it too i also just shared these in our fall haul but they're a great investment you don't get a lot for your money i think we i can't remember if we had three or six but these are a battery powered votive and 
They look so legit, they flicker, it's awesome, I love it, so cool. Fireplaces are another great way to make things cozy, but I think that's just a given. The second thing is to add nature. Nature is super calming. That's why people always say the best therapy is to be out in nature, grounding, touching things that are real. We have a lot of live plants in our house. Um, some of our plants are very summery, like our monstera and our snake plant. They're a little more on the boho vibes, which I don't, for me personally, is not as cozy as say like an, a, a Christmas tree or an olive tree things that are a little more muted. Um, but I also really like the look of dried flowers and we have those kind of different spots around the house right now. And they're just, they add more depth to the space. If you take plants out of a space, it automatically just feels a little more cold and less inviting. Plants make a room feel finished. And again, having that natural element is super helpful to creating a more inviting cozy space. The third thing is rugs and textiles. I just talked about some of these pillows that I purchased. They are super warm and inviting and cozy. They feel really nice. And adding stuff like this in layers just really makes a space just like you wanna ball up. And when we had people here for Halloween, they said that the house was literally really cozy. I'll insert some pictures and clips of what it looked like, but it really was. We had a lot of natural lights with the candles and then adding things like fuzzy blankets and pillows really can help as well. Now, I'm not a huge fan of like the polyester and expensive throws. I like things like muslin, good quality linen, even, you know, a nice, I, one of my favorite blankets, honestly, is Love Sack. Even though it is a man-made material, it's a really high quality um, material. So I love those. Also, rugs can really make a space just feel warmer, especially when you touch it with your feet. So if you have you know, empty space in your home, whether it's a hallway, in front of the kitchen sink, and you just wanna add a nice rug, I really like the ones from Ruggable. You can just throw them right in the wash. They're great for entryways, so it's, an, it's like the first thing someone sees when they walk into your house. It's inviting, it feels finished and thoughtful. So number four to kind of go along with the pillows and the throws is to just kind of really, uh, ex what's the word? deepen the texture point. Um, things like velvet, crushed linen, they're all really, really nice materials that people tend to just love to touch and it makes them feel nice and warm and fuzzy inside. Oh, and knits, add knits to that list. Another thing I like to do is change up the colors. So for example, in the summertime we have, I mean, all of our walls are white and we have a lot of light colored woods, but I like to kind of bring in darker tones. I talked about this pedestal bowl that I like to use. We have a lot of mango wood and white oak in this house, which again is lighter, but if you use some acacia wood, um, mahogany stuff. Also, I like to use things like leather during this time of the year. I purchased this on Amazon and it is such good quality. I think it was like 20 bucks. I'm not even kidding. And I just have a, 20, is it 24 by 24 or 20 by 20? I think it's 20 by 20 pillow in here. And a little pro tip for you guys. This was an old decorative pillow from my bedroom. And what's great is that when you buy decorative pillows, they're always, for the most part, in standard sizes. So you don't have to, it can kind of save up on storage space. You don't have to just store all of your seasonal pillows. A lot of my summer pillows in the fall and winter get covered by things like this. So I don't typically have to buy pillow inserts. Um, for example, all of my Christmas pillows I bought on Pottery Barn just as the covers and then I just cover pre-existing pillows. Make sense? So like this could easily, you know, get a tartan cover on it for Christmas. So yeah, caramel colors, amber. I do a lot with amber glass. I try to find candles that have really pretty dark you know, I've got an amber candle up there. Sometimes I'll do like more copper during the fall. I just like those warmer tones. I also like muted tones like these pillows. They're like very natural muted colors. And if even for like fun Halloween stuff, I keep things pretty muted. So for example, this was like the most actual bright orange we really had going on, which is fine. You need a little bit of it for, for the festive, you know, Halloween. But for day-to-day -day stuff, I like the muted tones, the earth tones, and I love doing like the dried foliage and stuff like that. We've got a bunch of it back there. One thing you want to do is avoid, or I guess not do, is have too many blank walls. Cause again, it just kind of makes space, spaces feel big and cold and we're not about that. Above our bar area, we have Kyle's 
a professionally framed map of Hawaii that he got while he was stationed there. It's actually like a nautical chart. And it just finishes this space. This wall is like 12 feet and the map's huge. So it really makes this space feel finished once we get our couch and can really kind of figure out what we want, you know, our space and our family room to be. I mean, our TV and fireplace is really the focal point of that space. It's very finished looking. So we don't need too much on the walls. And then I have a secret project. Well, it's not secret. I talked about it on Instagram, but there is our breakfast nook area coming together with our DIY table that I'm gonna be sharing with you. I'm doing a refinishing on a reclaimed barnwood table that I bought, and we're gonna need some artwork for over there, and I'm very excited. Fill up your walls, you can get inexpensive prints. I'll list some of my favorite places to source art from, or get a canvas at Michael's and go to town with some like fun, textured, abstract stuff. Also, I don't know if you guys know this, but I went to art school. Art was my major. I didn't finish art school, but that was like my route for a really long time. And I'm actually, I'm a painter. So if you guys wanna see some DIYs on some fun like texture painting, let me know. Another super great, easy thing is to use old stuff. Yard sales, antique stores, vintage. Shop your grandparents' house, shop your parents' house. Find cool, old, weird things. It's awesome. For example, up on our bar, I have vintage boxes from World War II era Hawaii. I have this decanter made in Italy that was my great grandfather's from Sicily. It's old, it's cool, it's a little spooky, and I love it. I also have some pieces from my grandfather's cabin. We've got these massive bullhorns. I don't know where they're going, but I love them. And I also have this really cool bullhorn, or it might not be a bullhorn. It's a horn, but it's what they use to carry gunpowder in, and I just think it adds a unique touch to the space. Another way to really just make a space feel lived in is to have personal objects. So whether that's pictures, we have pictures all over this room of our family and also having things that are just meaningful. So for example, Kyle's map, super meaningful. I have his custom made growler that I designed for him in here. Again, the vintage boxes, little tokens and keepsakes with you know different vignettes, things that are just meaningful. This butterfly that my grandparents got for me when I was a kid, it's in like a it's preserved. Just things that are personal and have like that older feeling. Number nine, scents. This is something that I am passionate about and it is trickled down into Kyle. He is now the candle guy. We need to get some natural diffusers as well because I want to try those. I think it's called Pura. If you guys tried that, let me know. I've heard a lot of people talk about it. It's that like you stick it on the wall and you can buy like really famous fragrances from like, I think you can do Le Labo and Nest and all those. Maybe Capare, Campari Blue. I'm butchering that. But I will spend a little extra money on nice candles. Excuse me, I'm getting a little dry. Cheap candles give me headaches. They make me nauseous. I avoid them. So make sure you're getting high quality fragrances. Home Goods does have a very solid candle selection. I love things that have cedar wood, sandal sandalwood, things that smell like fire, tobacco deeper sense. If that's not your jam, then it's not your jam. Maybe you want to do something more vanilla and buttery and caramely. Whatever you think is cozy, try it out. We've been burning a ton of candles like every day, all day, and it just makes the house feel so cozy and really at home. Number 10. This is one of my favorite tips. It's so easy. On your television, if you have access to YouTube, I know if you have um, the frame TV, you can definitely do this, but you can just set the picture or the backdrop as like an uh, ambiance, as a scene with sounds. It can be candlelit, it can look like you're in a mountain. Instant ambiance and it's cheap, it's free if you have the TV. So those were my 10 tips to make your house more inviting, more cozy, and just lovely for this festive season. I am so excited for Christmas, guys. You have no idea. This is the first Christmas in our house. We purchased the house December 20th of last year, but renovated it until April. So I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. But I am just like so excited to have Christmas in our, in our house because we didn't get to last year. Breakfast Nook DIY table is coming up. I'm very excited. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a video and follow along on Instagram. But as always, I hope you guys are doing well and I will see you in the next video.